Hello and welcome in to the Fog.net podcast. My name is Michael Swain, the Kansas beat writer for 24-7 Sports, and we've got a bit of an emergency podcast coming your way today. We're going to talk about this guy, Calvin Clements, the three-star offensive tackle from Lawrence Free State, committing to Kansas, KU's first in-state commit in the class of 2023. He was committed to Baylor up until earlier this week when he announced his decommitment on Tuesday. I'm joined by Kevin Flaherty, who does a lot of recruiting stuff for 24-7 sports in the state of Kansas. Before we get Kevin's take on this, I want to talk a little about just Calvin's recruitment overall. This is one that was really close from the get-go. Um, K really made him a priority. You know, the staff was the first staff to extend him a scholarship offer. And when Lance Leipold and offensive line coach Scott Fuchs came from Buffalo, they really made him a priority. You go through all the 2023 cycle, the spring into the summer, you know, KU gets him on campus for an official visit. They pull out all the stops. You know, he talks to Bill Self for a little bit and Self talks about, you know, how important it is to be an in-state guy and pick Kansas and decide to go to Kansas. And it was neck and neck with Baylor really a coin flip about as close of a a recruitment as you could see between two schools. He commits to Baylor in the end. And there have been some murmurs that maybe he had told the KU staff that, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more progress on the field. I wish I was a 2024 recruit. This is a story that Lance Leipold has told multiple times. And I don't think it's any secret that it was probably Calvin Clements that said that to him. And so throughout the course of the 2022 season, right, KU gets off to the good start five and oh, Clements is on campus for a game day visit. Um, I believe it was either the Duke or Iowa State games, a game KU won, and they continue to recruit him. They never stopped. And then after the the conclusion of the season, you know, Clements decides to reassess things and decides to be a Jayhawk. He's now KU's highest rated commit in the 2023 class. He picked KU in the end over seven offers total, six other schools, um, all power five offers, um, Programs like you know Minnesota, Oklahoma State, Nebraska all offered him a scholarship. So Kevin, now we bring you in. You're the expert here. You know mm-hmm. what exactly is Kansas getting in Calvin Clements, the six foot seven, two hundred ninety five pound offensive tackle? Yeah, don't forget K State either. And, yeah, and I think that that's yeah. I, I and you know that isn't rivalry talk or anything like that. I just I think that. When we look back over, say, the last five or ten years, the number of guys that that Kansas has gotten, that Kansas State has legitimately wanted in state, you know, you can probably count on one hand. <laughs> and, and, and you know, Devin Neal obviously being one of those guys. Devin Neal's panned out, and he's pretty good. Um, and, and so, I, I think when you look at when you look at this 2023 class in general, I, I've said before. You know, I, I've been tracking Kansas classes probably since 2004-ish or so um, when I first started up the fog and, and was really paying attention to local recruiting. Michael, this is the best Kansas class that I can remember, certainly the mm-hmm. deepest class in terms of quality players. Uh, we're talking about, I think they're around 20 guys, 25 guys who have the chance to play FBS football this year, which when you think about the size of the state of Kansas, everything is special. Getting into Calvin Clemens specifically, um, he he's a guy that uh, that your predecessor Scott Chasen and I had a had a chance to see in person when KU had him in camp last year, uh, not this past summer, but the summer before. And, and at that point, he was a pretty raw guy. I feel like you know he he looked like a basketball power forward, looked like maybe he had wandered in from uh, Bill Self's basketball camp and, and and kind of found the the wrong place. But you're talking about what everybody wants, right? A six foot seven athletic offensive tackle with a great frame to build on. Uh, I think, you know, the length is really appealing. Baylor can evaluate offensive linemen. They really yeah. can. And, and when you look at the fact that, uh, that Eric Matios, you know, targeted him fairly early and, and wanted Calvin Clements the way that he did, I, I think that's a pretty good indicator as well. And, and I think, when you look at this class and all the talent and what we were just talking about, I think if you poured some true serum down the throats of all the KU coaches and you said, who do you want most in this in-state class that they would probably say Avery Johnson, the quarterback Mm -hmm. who's going to Kansas state. I think if you said, okay, who would you want next? 
it would either be Calvin Clements or, or maybe Jordan Allen. And, and I think a big part of the reason for that is not only is Calvin Clements a guy who's a talented potential left tackle in the Big 12, but it's at a position that, that Kansas is looking for guys. They don't necessarily have that foundational young guy that people can look at and say, okay, this is our left tackle of the future. You add him to it, and this is a guy that I know, you know, you've spent more time talking to, but potentially somebody like an Isaiah Kima on the interior mm -hmm. and, and Scott Fuchs all of a sudden has an offensive line that I think the talent level is probably significantly ahead of what they currently have on the offensive line. Exactly. And if you want to project these things down the road, you know, you feel pretty good about James Livingston, the true freshman yep. offensive tackle. He had a really good start to camp, got hurt and has been hurt basically all season. But you know, if you're able to get Clement signed in December, you know, and what is it a couple of weeks from now, all of a sudden you're looking, you have two tackles that you feel pretty good about. And Kevin, I want to make sure we do Calvin a favor here because sure. I think that at least some of the discourse I've seen is, Hey, this is a guy that can come in and start early. Like, no, no, don't put no, that on. No. Don't. This is a guy that's going to need time to develop. Right. You mentioned how raw he was just the summer before. I believe that would have been his junior season. Yep. It, it's going to take time. And this is a guy that's going to need to work with Scott Fuchs in the meeting room on the football field. You know, I think this is the type of guy that goes away for two full seasons. Like, you don't want to see him on the field until he's at least a redshirt sophomore. And that's okay. Yeah. That's what a football program should be. And I think it's still equally large that you get a guy like this that is in your home state. You didn't have to go to Texas. You didn't have to go to, you know, any one of the surrounding states in Iowa or Minnesota to go get a guy like this. The fact that he's in your own backyard is huge. We'll talk about the impact on the 2024 class and Cave's in-state recruiting efforts in a second. But I just think overall, it's such a huge addition to this class when you look at offensive line being such a huge struggle for most of the season, right? This is something that I've written about on the website before where, you know, in August, I was talking to people around the program and they were kind of like pulling their hands up like, yeah, it's just a battle. We're struggling to get traction with a lot of guys after Clements decided to go to Baylor. And now all of a sudden you look here and we're in December and you got a guy like Clements on board and you got a guy like Isaiah Kama as well, who you feel pretty good about with the guy that, you know, he grew up in Lawrence and has ties to the key program. And all of a sudden you look and say, okay, now you got two high school linemen. And then you add that on to what you brought in last year. And also the fact that this offensive line room is generally pretty young. It's pretty encouraging. So I think just overall it's a Clements is a huge deal. I just want to make sure we do the kid a favor and don't put a lot of, pressure on him to come in and produce from day one because that should not be the expectation in my opinion sure and, and i think the one good thing is is kansas with its attorneys with uh with what they've done in the transfer portal um and, and with getting the the junior college kid as well you know they're going to have some options at, at offensive tackle where they don't need calvin clements to be everything right away and i think one of the things that's been really interesting, you know, obviously you were at camp this summer. I was at camp this summer. One of the things that I don't think people realize when they hear us talk about camp is a lot of times in those situations, coaches aren't just looking for, hey, this guy's good or this guy's bad. A lot of times they already know that before the kid is in that situation. They want to see, is this kid coachable? How does he react to when I give him a teaching point, how quickly does he process things? If I'm telling him, hey, do this differently this next rep, can he do it differently that next rep? Or does it take him a little while to, to kind of gain traction? And, and I think that first summer um, when you were looking at Scott Fuchs and the way that he operated at camp and, and the way he did last summer too – there are a lot of guys that you can tell they don't pick up things mentally quite as well as folks would like for them to pick up. And I think that that's another check mark in Calvin's favor is I think that when we saw him in camp, when folks had his hands on him and could coach him and say, Hey, you know, you got beat to the inside on this rep open with this hip when you're, you know, when you're blocking outside zone because they do outside zone blocking drills at camp actually, mm -hmm. Even yeah. though you don't have pads on or anything else, they work on the footwork and, and kind of the way that you, you know, come out of your stance, 
roll and, and fire off. That was something that Clements picked up more quickly than some other guys. And, and so when you look at those different factors, uh, I think, you know, Kansas has a guy who's, who's got ability. He's got athleticism. He's got the kind of frame that, that Gildersleeve is going to love, but also he's, he's coachable and, and he understands those different things. The one other thing that I would add, because I, I think you hit the nail right on the head when you were talking about the recruitment, you and I have talked uh, on this very podcast about the job that Kansas did recruiting Calvin Clements. And mm -hmm. a lot of times I, I've seen a couple comments from people who said, well, if Kansas really recruited him that well, you know, why did he go to Baylor? And, you know, we, we've talked about the fact that a lot of in-state kids, they wanted to see more from the university of Kansas before, before they picked it. And I think that, the fact that that Clements is bouncing back and, and you know is is going to uh, is committing to the University of Kansas is going to sign with KU. I think a lot of that has to do with how well they did recruit him. It was a really strong job that they did recruiting him through the process, and that allowed them to be there. You know, sort of after the season they had. Exactly. So we'll talk about here in a second the impact this will have on 2024 but want to let people know we have a sale going on as well um 50 off a vip subscription and if you sign up right now you also get paramount plus included so that's about a 200 dollar value between a hundred dollar annual subscription and a hundred dollar paramount plus subscription bundled up into something that is about five dollars a month for the course of a year um, paramount plus you can watch soccer if you're into soccer all sorts of CBS shows. You can also watch football games on there as well on the weekend if you are away from your TV. So, Kevin, let's talk about the 2024 class now in the state of Kansas. Obviously, I think we got to, we've talked about BJ Kennedy before, the name at the top of your screen there. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, Topeka native, uh, viewed as a defensive tackle for KU. Um, I think that this is a guy that KU's in a really good spot with. This is one guy that I talked to after Lance Leipold's contract extension came out, and I guess I had broken the news a little bit. Whoops. But, <laughs> said, yeah, it's great news. You know, I have a great relationship with Coach Leipold. Really excited that he's going to be around. I think this is a guy that Kansas fans have to know because if you're talking about building momentum in the state of Kansas, great. You have a great, in, you know, lineman, guy that plays in the trenches in this 2023 class. Well, there's another guy in 2024 that KU's – in a really good spot with um, overall, like when you look at the class, I guess where Kansas is at, what kind of stands out to you and how important do you feel like this addition of Clements is for just the future of Kansas recruiting? Yeah, it's really important. And when you look at, when you look at the way that these classes go, I, I feel like in 2024, we haven't found some of the best guys in the state yet. There are guys mm -hmm. who are going to grow a couple inches. There are guys who, are probably going to show up at Jake Sharp's combine, which is kind of a milestone event for us every year where we're going to say, who, who is that kid, you know, or, or whatever else. It's not as strong as 2023. I do think we're starting to see more and more of these guys. Now that we're seeing junior film, things like that. Um, BJ Kennedy, we've talked in the past about how, this is a kid who's who's positively inclined towards Kansas. And so you really yeah. wanted to give him a reason when other schools came in and, and came calling. I, I think BJ is probably going to be a defensive tackle. You know, you see the frame, you see the way that he moves and everything. He's got a chance to add a lot of really positive weight and be a really sort of dynamic three technique, I think, which is why he's at the top of the state. Caden Massey, the offensive tackle from Linden, Already holds a KU offer. KU got him to come in and, and visit. He's a six foot eight offensive tackle who's got some agility and things like that. And all of a sudden, Michael, when you start stacking guys like Clements and maybe a Caden Massey or somebody like that at class after class after class after class, you know, not only are you getting good individual players, but you're in you're giving yourself that much better odds to find that guy that hey, when you roll out and it's 2020 set, or maybe not that late, 2025, 2025, and you're playing Missouri and you need to have a left tackle out there who can protect your quarterback's blind side, 
you're, you're giving yourself more options there. Mm -hmm. I, I think John Price is a guy you saw and you really, really liked. Uh, yeah. Trey Ridley was at Kansas's camp this summer. And mm -hmm. so that's another guy. I, I'm not sure that Kansas is, is all in on the recruitment there yet in terms of offers, in terms of interest level. I think it's kind of wait and see. Wouldn't you agree yeah. that they're kind of like, Hey, let's, let's see the junior tape. Let's see how he develops. Um, Michael Boganowski, that's a kid that I think has some really dynamic athleticism. He's somebody that I see rising up this list. Kansas got in on that one early as well. And so I think one of the things that's standing out from 2024 and 2023 is 2023, one of the reasons Kansas State has done really well in this class they do a really good job recruiting, but they had also built those relationships, right? They'd had more time with those guys. Now, all of a sudden with 2024, you're rolling over with Kansas, having a positive season one, you're rolling over the fact that the coaches have built relationships with these guys. In yeah. some cases, they were first to the table. They offered Caden Massey before K-State did. And so when you, when you look at that, you know, and the fact that they were able to, they've been able to build those relationships and everything else. Now you add in that, Hey, in this 2023 class that everybody's talking about how strong the state is, Kansas just added the best tackle added a top 10 player. I think it's another step in that direction that, Hey, things are, are trending right in state for Kansas right now. Yep, and it just takes one, right? You think about Devin sure. Neal and, and the Les Miles staff and how big that was for them, and I think someone like Calvin Clements could have a similar impact considering the fact that he was committed to the team that was picked to win the Big 12 at the start of the season, and it didn't go Baylor's way, obviously, but I think that it's a huge moment for Kansas. Running through the 2024 class real quick, you know, B.J. Kennedy at the top, KU has offered. Caden Massey, KU has offered. John Price, KU offered. I saw him play in person. Um yep. Damn is what I'm going to say. <laughs> really good and explosive. And I think the type of guy that will be a really good running back for Kansas. Now, the fact that Red Martell is committed right now, you know, maybe that's a little bit of an interesting dynamic to watch for John Price. You know, does that maybe hurt K's chances? I genuinely don't know. But then you go down the list, right? You know, no offer for Gus Hawkins, no offer for Trey Ridley, and then Michael Boganowski. So, so far, you're really looking at four offers to in-state kids in 2024. A lot will change in the coming months, but and you know we'll have you covered with that at fog.net. So, Kevin, that's all we got time for. I don't want to take up too many people's time here, but just want to jump on real quick and discuss the commitment, what it means. Um, if you like the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on your pod or listening on your podcast platform of choice, make sure you subscribe to the feed, leave a five star rating if you're on the Apple Podcast app as well. Kevin, thanks a bunch. We'll be back on Sunday with more football coverage.